Well, welcome home. Um, obviously, let's let's talk. Let's start off a little bit with your your start of last season. Uh, got off to a flyer. Surprisingly, um, you got to call up to um, go to Euro. Um, something that no other Bermudian has ever uh, experienced. Um, give us a sense of what what when you got pulled into that team. <laughs> what that was like, because I remember hearing it from your mom, but hearing it from you. Yeah, um, well, that was like, first I want to say that was like a dream come true, because like, I got to play in front of like, it was like 35,000 fans. That's everything you dream of when you're like growing up and trying to make it. And um, I got to come on in like the last like 20 minutes of the game, I think. And, um, it was, felt amazing. Like, you know? And that sort of momentum carried you for the season? Yeah, of course. Um, it gave me a lot of confidence and um, it showed me like how close you really are to being where you want to be. Now, when you went back for preseason um, prior to the start of last season, what, were you, what was your main focus to try and get out of that under-21 team yeah, into that first team? Yeah, of course. Um, my main focus um, at the start of the season was just to try to impress the new coach Slavin Village and uh, to try to get as many opportunities in the first team as possible. Yeah. What did you do? Well, obviously it was the last season at that stadium, moving yeah. to, to, the, to the Wembley Stadium, but the atmosphere at the beginning of the season, yeah. people felt it was going to be a special one for you guys. Um, just being around it, being involved in it at the training sessions, what was that, that the, the preseason like heading into the season? That was, that was like, it was a real, I would say, like a big buzz around the whole training ground, everything, all the staff, all the coaches, you could feel it like everybody knew that the club was going in such a good direction and everybody just wanted to be a part of it. Now, West Ham is, is one of those clubs where um, they're well known worldwide. Um, back in the 60s, they were the dominant ones, um, but that momentum kind of has carried on. Representing a club that is enriched in England football history. What is what is how does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel glad to be a part of it for one, and um, for another reason, I would say it makes me want to sort of, as you said, like it has a lot of history, but now the name is getting even bigger. So. I think the club's going in a good direction. It makes me have to work very hard to go in the same direction as the club. As a, as a, as a young professional, um, what are some of the things you're required to do to try and impress the new coach? Um, well, first you have to like, first you have to like, you have to be on time to everything. Right. Like, you can't show up late right. um, to stuff. <laughs> and, um, I would say also, I mean, you have to train hard every single day. You can't have any days off. Right. Um, especially being a young player trying to break into the first team. Every training session has to be like a game. You can't take some days off. And um, I would say also, even outside of football, socially wise, you have to get along with um, the other first team players. Mm. Yeah. Now, how challenging is that for you? I mean, you've been in that, that environment since you were, what, 10? Um, no, no, no. Well, when I'm well in, the, in the environment of, of being around footballers. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, I would say probably about 10. Yeah, yeah. It's, but it's still a challenge for you? Um, or is it something that comes normal now, that getting up to, to, to impress every single day? Oh, yeah, 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 that side of it, that's easy. I mean, because personally, I love football, so me being able to go out and do my best every day is easy for me. I don't even really think about it, you know, because like, I always want to win, I always want to be the best player in the training or be the best in the game, it's just natural. Now, a footballer, young, old, whatever, goes through stages of their life where it feels as if things are not going as planned. And as planned means a little niggle here or you're not in the team because you're not doing what mm -hmm. the small things. How does one overcome that? Oh man, um, you have to be very strong-minded and um, you have to, I would say, the best way to being able to get over maybe an injury, for example, you have to have a goal in your head to say, I want to come back by this, or like, I want my leg to be, or 
I'm saying my leg because I got injured. Right, right. Yeah, but um, you want your injury to be as good as this by this time. I would say the best is goal setting. Yeah, and what happens if, if those targets are not met? Well, I mean, one thing I had to learn very quickly is that, like, the game stops for nobody. Right. So you can't ever be like, oh, well, that didn't work, so like, I'm just going to sit here. You have to make another goal and keep going right. because if not, somebody else will come and take your place. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, after the, the two experiences in the Euro team, mm -hmm. uh, the league starts. Uh, you're back with the under 21s, but filtering in into yeah. the to the first team, yeah. um, bouncing between games and between teams is that a challenge? Because obviously the 21s are playing Mondays or Tuesdays, yeah. and, and and the first team is playing Saturdays. So you're yeah. Um, I would say physically it's definitely a challenge. I think mentally I was pretty much more excited, but um, physically I think it did take a toll on my body sometimes because say I was on the bench on a Saturday. Um, I would have to train Sunday morning with the players who didn't play. Right. If, if I didn't um, come on or something. So, and then, um, yeah, so I would, I would go, I would play a game maybe Monday, and then I would have a full week's training, and then I would travel, um, be on the bench, and then I will have to train again Sunday, and then I would have to do it all again. I almost never got any days off. Right. right. And um, that definitely takes a toll on your body. But do you think being around that environment, especially um, in the first team, out of the first team, yeah. how does how does one stay grounded? Because because it's a, yeah, yeah, it's, it's a big thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, when you're with the, people are waiting for the players yeah. to come off the bus, you're yeah. you know you're doing all sorts of different things. <laughs> and how do you yeah. stay grounded? Um, I think the best way to stay grounded is. What do you want me to give you examples of what I do? Yeah, what you do. Well, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I try not to read a lot of stuff that they say about me online. I try to, I mean, I try to like, I, my friend here that I have with me, I've been with him for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I try to speak to him like a lot and um, try to stay very humble. And um, what else do I do to keep level-headed? I mean, I try to... I try to keep pretty much the same group of people around me who have been with me before mm -hmm. I started having more success. Right. Which, if they see that I'm doing something that's not the same as I would a few years ago, they'll tell me. Right. So it's easy to stay level-headed like that. No, I'm always in contact with your biggest fan, it's your mom. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> she, she's, she's always, this is what he's doing, this is, you know, having someone so far away but within reach yeah. when I say within reach you, you're always skyping you're yeah. always talking how does that help you uh, mentally to prepare for a new challenge each and every day um it's good um having good family support right. um I think that's a little extra push sometimes that you might need being able to have your family support you I mean I would love if I had them right next to me but obviously that's not what I was blessed with right now I'm sure that'll come in time, but it's always good to have my mom there to talk to me about stuff and help me with things that maybe she's experienced and um, she can give me advice on it. Right. Now let's go through the season. Uh, you're scoring goals in the yeah. in the under 21s, and then disappointment with yeah. with the injury. Yeah. Um, and it, but it's not the first time that you had to overcome yeah. an injury. But this time, and things looked as if you were knocking on that door. Yeah, Actually, the door yeah. was, he was, he was mm -hmm. turning the handle to, yeah, to open yeah. the door. It, a setback like that, when you're feeling good about yourself, and you've seen other players go through it, yeah. how much of what, they, what you saw them go through helped you um, get over that hurdle to want yeah. to get back? Um, I think when I, when I got injured, like, I, I think because of the person that I am, like, I didn't, I didn't really believe it, like, until maybe like a week later. Like, they told me I was injured. I was like, no, nah, I'll be fine by next week, right, right. you know. Right. And then they put me in a cast and put me on crutches, and then that's when it really hit me. I was like, man, I'm actually like, I'm actually. They predicted me out for 12 weeks, right? But I mean, I came back in about seven to eight weeks, right. and um, I was just so focused on like. I think it was because I got such a good taste of where I wanted to be. Right. 
and I was like, I need to get back to this, right. you know? Right. So, um, I think that helped me to be able to come back stronger. Right. You know? Now you get into the final, yeah. first leg, yeah. um, and magic moment. Yeah, that was, <laughs> I can't lie, that was probably like, that was probably one of my best moments in a Western journey. Right. Because, I mean, all the emotion that I had from getting injured. Right, and, the fight back. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me to come back, especially that was the last um, final that's, that's ever played at Upton Park as well. Right. So, I mean, there was a lot of fans there, and um, that, was, that was just amazing. Because guess what happens now? You're the first Bermudian to play in Europe. Yeah. And you're the last person to ever score a goal mm, at the city. Yeah, in a game that's meaningful. Yeah, yeah, they have yeah. testimonies and all yeah. that, but a meaningful game that that yeah. actually helped your team yeah. win a trophy. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I can't even explain like how how that felt. Like, right. It was, and the thing is, after you score and you're going to celebrate, like it's like it happens so fast. Like it's it's a blur. Like right. you don't really remember right. it. And, and looking back at the video yeah, and the pictures, yeah. uh, <laughs> was a lot of excitement. Yeah, it was, it was so crazy. But then you have to wait a week yeah. uh, for the return leg, mm -hmm. which is something, obviously, you're still um, not feeling the effects, but you're worried a little bit about your yeah. injury, yeah. how you're yeah. going to react, and then you've got your time constraint because they're telling you you could only play X amount of time. Yeah. Um, over the course of that week, yeah. what was your training schedule like? Um, I'm not gonna lie, they were like, I didn't really train that much when I first came back because I was having a lot of problems with my back. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, well, I can't say no because I'm injured. No, right. my knee wasn't actually 100%. Right. I didn't really tell them, but like, right. it felt like good enough to play, but it wasn't 100%. But I think they, I think they sort of knew that and they just wanted me to push through it because it was the last game of the season. Right. Um, so I didn't really train that much. I pretty much just came back and played two games, right. if I'm being honest with you. Right. And um, in the second game, I started and I wasn't, I didn't feel as fit as I could have. But I mean, I still got through the game. Right, you know? right. And then yeah. sit there, well, you're on the sideline when, when the final whistle's blown and yeah. it's penalty kicks. Yeah, so, oh man, I was, I was pretty upset that I got taken off, but they have to look after my physical, um, side of it. Right. You know, I mean, I pretty much just want to play football, but right. they have to be smart about my leg and everything. Yeah. So. so the season ends and you go, You did you go on the on a tour? Yeah, we went to Amsterdam. Right, you went yeah. to Amsterdam yeah. and obviously you had time to train, mm -hmm. your fitness level yeah. comes back. How does that tour set you up for when you get back for preseason? Yeah, it was good. I mean, um, I, I, I had a lot of good performances. I mean, I scored a very, very good free kick, yeah. and I got um, man of the match in a in a crucial game mm -hmm. for us to get into the semi final. But what actually happened the night before the semi final, I got really sick. I think I got food poisoning, right. and then I ended up having to sit on the bench for a few games because I wasn't feeling myself. But, I mean, it was it was definitely good. Even another side of it, we got to play against um, teams from other countries. Mm -hmm. Um, and see how we compare up against them. Right, so, yeah. right. Which, obviously, I must say, you guys did um, do rather well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, unlucky we lost in the final in the final, penalties. Right, so, right. Yeah. Uh, which one's sweeter, the 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 cup, the under twenty one cup final? Yeah. Or, yeah. Or what? The girl, or or or, or the semi final, the final loss in in Amsterdam. Oh no, no, no definitely the <laughs> under twenty one. Yeah. Yeah. Course, yeah. So. You, you go back and everything's new. Um, when I say everything's new, the new training grounds, the new, yeah. all sorts of new stuff happening. Yeah. But you're in Europe again. Yeah. Um, and you, you're going to United States for tour. Well, the mm -hmm. club's going to United States for tour. Mm -hmm. um, when will you find out if you're involved in that? Um, I actually spoke to somebody about it yesterday. I don't think they've finalized, actually, yeah, finalized the squad, but right. you should find out probably in the next few days, I'm okay. sure. Okay, yeah. so you'll go back and you'll have a few days of training and then, mm -hmm. but then before the season starts, it's it's uh, Euro. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, what do you guys get? Uh, six six weeks off, maybe? I think, I think we had about seven weeks off. Right. Yeah. Some of those players, some of your, your teammates are mm -hmm. taking part in the yeah. European Cup mm -hmm. and so forth, but no rest. Yeah, 
Yeah, I know. It's Come right back and right into the mix. Yeah. Uh, must be exciting times for your teammate. Um, uh, what's he scoring goals to for? Yeah. Um, right. Yeah, 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 Dimitri. Dimitri. Yeah, well. How is he uh, as a, as a teammate? Someone you, you, you obviously you, you, you share a corridor with. Yeah. Um, how is he off the field? He's. I mean, I was telling somebody the other day. Like, I mean, I like him because he's a very humble person. You know, mm -hmm. like he doesn't act like oh I'm this and I'm that. Like you're younger than me. Like he still comes and says good morning to me every morning and shakes my hand and you know. We always like laugh and do tricks together in training, and it's, it's good because for him to have a relationship with me, that that means a lot to me because I look up to him as a player, and especially I feel me and him have similar attributes within our game. So for him to be able to be such a, a cool guy to me is, is, is good to me. What goals have you set for yourself this season? This season, I mean, I either. It's with me this season, it's, it's either two things. Either I'm going to go back in the preseason and play how I need to play and go straight into the first team, which I know I can do. Or if that doesn't work, then I have to go out on loan and um, do what I can do there. Right. Well, I feel either way, I'm very confident about yeah. this. Well, you, you re really set a name for yourself <laughs> uh, at a young age. Um, um, but confidence-wise, if you had, if you were in front of a group of youngsters who yeah. were your age when you first left the country, mm -hmm. what, what would be some of the things you'd be telling them um, to look forward to over the course of the next, say, ten years? Yeah. Um, I would first. I would say when you first go there, you have to be very confident. Um, don't like think oh, I'm going to another country and these boys might be better than me. I mean. I think you just have to be confident within yourself first and um, you have to be very mentally strong. I mean, especially if you go there by yourself and you don't go there with family, mm -hmm. you have to be mentally strong to be able to, to um, get through certain stages if you're not playing well or if you get injured, you have to be strong. And um, the focus really is easy to get um, unfocused and caught up into different things, especially as you get higher in the game because you start getting more money and you can do more things that will take your focus away. But you have to always remember that football is the most important thing. You know? right. so that's what I always you, you, you set yourself goals mm -hmm. and realistic ones. Yeah. I think the one that you said first, which is go back and prove you can be on the team. Mm -hmm. When you get a new coach, and, and obviously the new coach did come and watch you guys play a lot because just about every time I saw yeah. online he was in the stands. Yeah. Some of the some of the encouraging things that he would be telling you guys, does he meet with you guys after games just to give you a word of confidence or um, he leaves that up to the first day? The, the, yeah, the, yeah he, if I'm being totally honest, Slavin isn't really the type of coach, like, he... I don't know how to explain it. like, don't get me wrong, he's a very good coach, I mean, but he says subtle things, like, he doesn't, like, have a full team talk, even in the first team, oh, okay. he doesn't really have, like, a full 10-minute team talk, like, how you think he would, I mean, he'll say, oh, maybe you should have did this, or you should have did that, or you should have did that, and tell everybody, like, come on, let's work hard in this next half. Mm -hmm. But I mean, other than that, I mean, he pretty, he'll say, like, maybe one thing to you, but I mean, I think he knows if you're a good player or not, and he pretty much lets you make your own mistakes and decisions. And if you make a mistake, then he'll tell you, do this next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. How, how much, how much, you said you you got, you like to do tricks in training. Yeah. How much of that training tricks do you try from game time? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love to do tricks all the time. Right. I mean, I feel like, like, I feel like I like to entertain the crowd, you know? Right. Like, I love when, the crowd like goes crazy when you <laughs> like you do a trick, put it through somebody's legs right, or something. Right, right. Or I mean, even the best is when you score a goal. Right. The whole crowd goes crazy. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I mean, I like to entertain. Well, the funny thing I have to tell you this: um, the day you came on as a sub in the European Cup, yeah. in the European game, mm -hmm. um, I was on the phone with your mom, mm -hmm. and you would have thought 
she was standing next to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the noise she was making, uh, <laughs> and you hadn't even come on. You, yeah, yeah, you were just yeah, standing there next yeah. to the to the fourth official, uh -huh. and then when the then the, then the uh, assignment up with the uh, sixty nine coming on, yeah. I was like, oh my gracious! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but obviously, you're, you're you're in the team, and your name's called, mm -hmm. and your name's called that you're going on. What runs through your mind? Oh man, I'm just, <laughs> I don't I don't really remember to be honest with you. Like. Uh, what was I thinking? I don't know. I think I was just like, hurry up like, for the other guy to come up so I can go in. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. And then you get on the plane and you yeah. go for the second leg. Yeah. Um, that must have been another thing mm -hmm. to travel. Um, and you were going to another country, obviously. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like you was heading somewhere just yeah. on the road to play football. Mm -hmm. But the atmosphere between Premiership and European Cup, mm -hmm. Is that something totally different? Um, I think I think Premiership is a little more. I think they're a little bit more passionate. I'll say about mm. it because it's an actual league, like Europa League. I don't really think you any team, especially the level that football is now. I don't think any team can go into a tournament and think like, oh, we need to, we can win this. Or I think you have to just perform your best and then take it as every step goes. Mm -hmm. But Premier League, like, you have to win. If your team doesn't come away with three points, then it's a problem. Right. Like, so I think Premier League's a little more passionate, they're a little more serious about it. Now, you've watched a little bit about a little bit of this um, European Cup. Yeah. And you see all the fan trouble and so forth. Oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Do you think that can filter into the game more and more? Because it did back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. When they used to have crowd trouble, it just sort of escalated into the league, but they got control of it. Yeah. How does one, how do you, as a player, as a player, how do you think that, do you think it could stay stamped out of the game in England, especially in the stands? Because um, you can't stop it out in the streets and yeah, so forth. Of course. It's, it's in the stands. Um, in the stands, yeah, I think, I just think security will do that, like having police and stuff mm -hmm. to separate or one team sitting and the other team sitting. And they can't really do anything. No. Yeah. Something when the fans turn on each other, ain't it? Yeah. Croatia. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know. That was crazy. So, so what happens? Um, you're you're back and you're fully 100 percent now. Yeah, I feel yeah. good now. Yeah. 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 yeah, you're here. You're you've been visiting family and friends. Mm -hmm. I was at the uh, finish line for the sailboat racing yesterday. Okay. And your your family up in the West End yeah, was yeah, was yeah, telling me yeah. he's here he's here yeah, I said I know yeah, he's here yeah. not to worry I know he's here yeah. we're, we're working things out yeah. but you have a lot of family and friends here have you been around to see everyone yet or? um I've pretty much seen the majority of everybody yeah um, yeah I think I've seen the majority of family and friends one person I do need to go see is Clyde uh, Best before I leave oh, okay. Obviously, help me have this opportunity. Right. So I need to make sure I go have a good talk with him. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I can always give you his number if you want. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But um, but thank you for your time. I know you're yeah, you're, you're, you're very busy man. You're relaxing. <laughs> it's vacation yeah. time for you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I want to thank you for your time and good luck this season. Yeah, thank um, you. What number are you gonna wear this year? I'm not sure. I haven't even found out yet. Oh, okay. Because yeah. for the Europa Cup, you was oh, wearing 69. 64. 64. Yeah. Um, you were wearing in the league 40, 40. In the league, so probably be like lower than 40 I'm not sure okay yeah. alright well we'll be looking out for that and we'll be looking out hopefully yeah. you get to go to United States on the tour yeah alright mm -hmm. okay good luck yeah, thank you thank you much.